And it's 19 hours GMT. Hello, good evening to you. Welcome to News 360's Live Money News up here at Adesawe in Kanda. My name is Alfred Okansi. And I'm Natalie Fort. A look at the top stories this evening. News 360 headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paint, GT Bank, Piccadilly Biscuits, and My Life Insurance. Electoral Commission sued over upcoming limited voter registration exercise. Power Distribution Services BDA says it is taking steps to secure an injunction to restrain defaulting customers from attacking its workers on a mass disconnection exercise. Vodafone Ghana Music Award Board bans dancehall artists Shatawale and Stoneboy indefinitely and strips them of all awards won in the 20th anniversary edition. And on the international front, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi secures another five-year term after a landslide general election victory. Bring your details of these and more tonight here, including business and sports tonight here on News 360. Remember, we're live on DSTV Channel 279, on TV3 Gun, on Facebook, all across the world on 3news.com. On to our first story this evening, and a member of parliament for Boko Central, Mahama Yaraga, has been sued for using public office for private benefit by the special prosecutor. He faces four counts of evasion of custom duties and taxes using public office for private benefit, dealing in foreign exchange without license and transfer of foreign exchange from Ghana through an unauthorized dealer. The OSP sued Ayarga in a writ dated March 22, 2019. The special prosecutor is suing the member of parliament for Boku Central constituency, Mahama Yariga, for abuse of office. The former minister of state is accused of tax evasion in the clearance of three Toyota V8 vehicles. He is also sued for illegal transfer of foreign exchange from Ghana to Dubai without having the required license to undertake such transaction. Second accused person, Kendrick Akwetimafo, a car dealer, faces one count of fraudulent evasion of customs duty and taxes. According to the leaked chart sheet, Parliament at its last sitting on April 7, 2017, by a resolution approved a loan agreement for the purchase of MPs' official vehicles between the House and Societe General Ghana. Each MP was entitled to 80,000 CDs loan payable within a period of four years for the purchase of their official vehicle. The Boku Central Legislature is alleged to have connived with Sharif Ahmed Tijani Abdullah, who had a registered company called Ash Plant Pool Limited with the sole aim of representing the company as the MP's supplier. The MP was granted a tax exemption on condition that he pays duties and taxes to the tune of 36,591 cities upfront before the vehicles are cleared from the port since the duties and taxes on the vehicles exceeded his allowable exemption. Rather, Mahama Yariga was alleged to have paid an amount of 6,062 cities instead of the 36,591 cities to clear the vehicles at the port. The case is yet to be assigned to a judge. So that's, as you see, there's the action taken against Boko Central MP Mahama Ayariga by the Office of the Special Prosecutor. And some do raise the argument of the fact that this office, two years, almost two years into its establishment, there may be some other more pressing issues to, to be prosecuting or to be investigating as opposed to this particular issue of Mahama Ayariga looking at the cases of corruption countrywide. Now, the, these are a few cases brought to the office of the special prosecutor, not the official list released by the office, but 
Individuals have petitioned the office to further investigate these cases, such as the governing party's chairman, Freddie Blay, for $11 million promise to get each of the 275 constituencies a minibus, which led to accusations of vote buying, as well as the former chief executive of BOST, Alfred Obeng Boateng, being fingered in the decision to sell 1.8 million barrels of crude oil at a discounted price, which allegedly cost the nation 30 million CDs in revenue. And some other cases that, that many are concerned that the Office of the Special Prosecutor may alternatively direct its attention is the Deputy Finance Minister Charles Edu Boahing, respondents in a case in which he's alleged to have used his public office for private benefits, including the processing of government payroll, as well as an issue regarding the Chief Executive of the Forestry Commission, Kwejo Owusu Afriye, in that. And the case of money laundering against the former Gender and Social Protection Minister Nana Oyelitha. And what we are seeing is the former Minister of Information, Mahama Ayariga, accused of evading tax in the importation of some vehicles. And so the question remains, I mean, some may say that this particular case may be what the, minister, maybe what the Office of the Special Prosecutor may have full information on and so would prosecute this state, this particular case, for starters. However, it is still an issue as to if this is the most pressing case that that the office should be following. Alfred? Well, Adley, thank you for that. Now, the two musicians at the center of the VGMA brawl, Shatawale and Stone Boy, have been banned indefinitely from taking part in the award scheme. The feuding dancehall artists have also been stripped of all awards they won at the 20th anniversary edition of the VGMA. Also, I report the decision is ultimately intended to restore sanity in the music industry. VGMA announced that the gentlemen at the center of the confusion, Satawali and Stoneboy, have been banned indefinitely, and they are also supposed to return all the plaques they won on the night. There is no reason why we should let these two gentlemen hold us back in our development. Both musicians are hereby banned indefinitely from participating in the nominations, selections, and performances at the Vodafone Ghana Music Awards scheme. Also, the two artists are hereby stripped of all awards they won at the 20th VGMA <laughs> and are thus requested by the board to return all plaques in their possession. For flouting the terms and conditions of the scheme, the chairman of the VGMA board, Amanzi Banat Brew, disclosed the two unannounced awards, Artist of the Year and Song of the Year, have also been annulled. The two remaining awards, that is most popular song, of the year and the artist of the year have for the 20th edition of the Vodafone Ghana Music Awards been nullified. The ban may however be reversed if the two popular musicians show remorse and exhibit good behavior. Basically we've said that if you bring the scheme under disrepute, what I think is going to happen is that subsequent boards will be looking at their actions to see whether really it is something that needs to be looked at to get them back into the scheme or not. Right, so and there was another call that they are supposed to return the plug they won. What happens if it doesn't come back to Teta House? Um, I believe that two of them are honorable people and they will return the plugs. But minutes before the decision was communicated, Shatawale took to Facebook to announce his boycott of subsequent VGMAs. His post read, Upon sober reflections of events in recent times and having made broader consultations, I wish to announce that I will not be part of the Ghana Music Awards scheme going forward. God bless. Well, some residents of Tamale and adjoining communities in the northern region on Tuesday besieged the premises of the Ghana Water Company Limited to protest against the cut in water supply for over a month. Zubeda Ismail has the rest of the story. Areas including the Pukba, Kaliriga, Tishigu, Target, and Bupila have been without water supply for close to one month. The aggrieved residents say they have depended on boreholes which are drying up to register their displeasure over what they termed unwarranted cut in water supply. They must up at the forecourt of the Quimers Palace. <laughs> <laughs> 
They march through some principal streets of Tamale, ending at the regional headquarters of the Ghana Water Company. The Northern Regional Director of Ghana Water, Indebugri Isaka Stevens, blamed the situation on power outages and increased population. The difficult thing I want to also impress upon is about the communities. You have Sabulu, you have Dalot, you have uh, Kumungu, you have uh, all the areas. The areas which were getting water 24 hours, we cut them away. They can't get to that way. Because the population have, have grown. The water we have is not I know for everybody. So we have to cut people and save others. According to the Ghana Water Company, it loses 45,000 cubic meters of water representing 22 to 28 percent daily to the activities of San Juanes, close to the buffer zones of the intake point at the Lung and Nawune. Now, government is considering an upward review of passport fees to avoid losses incurred in the processing and production of the travelling documents. Interacting with the media in Accra, the Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration Minister, Shirley Ayoko Butwe, noted Ghana's passports are highly subsidised, making it the least expensive in Africa. The Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration Minister, Shirley Ayoko Butwe, said... Passport processing was a service that government did not intend to make profit on, but it was wrong for it to be subsidized. When we announced outside Ghana that we will be reviewing the cost of uh, passports outside Ghana downwards, uh, because there the cost is, is a bit high. So we will be reviewing it downwards. But here also, we are at making a loss. And therefore, there will be the need for Ghanaians to pay the realistic prices for passport. But no decision has been taken yet. But at least we've taken the first step to increase the duration of the validity of a passport from five years to ten years. She said the ministry had rolled out online application facilities at three passport application centers in Koforidia, Tema and the VFS Park on experimental basis. Adding that Ghanaians in the diaspora have not been left out on the extension of passport service as six diplomatic missions, namely London, Berlin, Washington DC, New York, Victoria and Abuja will now process the travelling document. The minister spoke on extending the validity of passports from five years to ten years. A resident of Daboya in the Savannah region, Omar Ayuba, has sued the Electoral Commission at the Supreme Court over what he described as attempts to suppress Ghanaian voters through the limited voter registration exercise to be conducted by the Commission. The plaintiff argued conducting the limited voters registration at the district offices of the electoral management body will disenfranchise a high number of potential voters. According to the plaintiff, the practice of registration at electoral areas is now law per the Public Sections Regulations 2016 CI-91. He said the historical records show that this approach has the advantage of bringing the voter registration exercise closer to eligible persons who are desirous to register. He explained that for eligible citizens residing in remote rural constituencies of the country, the registration at the level of the electoral area minimizes the cost of travel to and from district capitals, which in most cases are located far from rural dwellings. He made particular reference to the Daboya Mankregu constituency, where a first time voter residing in Bombo, a rural community in the constituency, needs to travel 94 kilometers to the district capital to Dabuya in order to be able to register. The EC will embark on the exercise from Friday, June 7 to Thursday, June 27 in all its district offices and selected electoral areas across the country. 
Now, in some other news, the National Development Planning Commission, NDPC, has stressed the need for a broad-based ownership of the country's development agenda to promote ownership and accountability. Addressing the media in Accra, the chairman, Professor Stephen Ade, expressed concern about the growing politicization and sensationalism of the country's development aspirations, which militates against long-term progress. Ghana has made some considerable strides in its development agenda through its medium-term development plans at national and sub-national levels. However, development experts argue the country's development has been uneven and plagued with discontinuation of plans and policies when governments change. The NDPC is reiterating the need to foster a collective sense of agency and political commitment to meaningfully engage citizens on a common national development agenda. There is only one thing, development of Ghana, and the, the governments are to be the vehicle to do so. So it's a question of educating the Ghanaians to demand from the policy makers and the politicians what they require. At this moment, it's almost like this is what we want to do. This is our manifesto. The manifestos will be put in a forum like this. MPP manifesto. Mm, this is it. Is that the best one for Ghana so that when we elect you and you implement this? And this, these are the things we should interrogate. The Commission is initiating a monthly national development forum on topical national issues to build consensus on national aspirations and priorities to engender a hopeful active populace. On Wednesday, we are starting our kickoff one, is Ghana at 100. I think that this should not be a partisan issue. What country do we want to have? By the time this country celebrates its 100th anniversary, and how can we ensure that we get there? So that is what we are going to discuss. The other one is about infrastructure, about quality education, you know, about how do we get the energy. There's one going to come on corruption. Eight sessions are programmed from May to December with regular monthly dialogues. Expectations from the fora will guide the formulation of short, medium and long-term proposals for national development. Is appealing to President Kofuado to consider revamping several defunct factories in the region. The traditional leaders, led by Obrim Ponya and Fokrampa, uh, the 11th, were at the Jubilee House to discuss pertinent issues confronting the region. The chiefs raised concern about factories in the region which had either folded up or needed support. Factories in the central region, you took the factory now in Akufim. Ah, in your revival. Now, yes, sir. Factory with the Prusimana Cement Manufacturing Company. Ah, our Gumwa Improvement. Yes, sir. Nancy Omega Production. You best say your man pay no. There, you don't know Oka or ye. Omo Modiana, on training from your central region. Now, company na Akufimono. Why China drink and will not? Why Shema? You do not revive or you don't copy no. The traditional leaders congratulated the president for his government flagship programs such as planting for food and jobs, nation builders call, one district, one factory, and the free senior high school initiatives. President Kufado saw the chief the challenges were being addressed. We're talking about the future and all of these uh, uh, possibilities there are for enhancing domestic product. We talk about lime, pigment clay, there are so many of the minerals in the area and the resources that fit very well into the whole program of the 1D1F. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's why I think that we need more concrete answers for them as to where we are in the negotiations and the discussions in these areas. Yeah. The president again assured the chiefs the region would be giving its deserved attention. Let's turn to MTN Vision Reports this evening. As our citizen journalist Isaac Debra highlights on constant flooding at Ningo Pram Pram in the greater Accra region. I am in the Chupuli Saglemi area. Severe flooding. This has been happening not now, 
in the year 2011 this occurred but this one is more than that because we can see people have started building in our gutters and then we need the intervention of the history to come and help us so that we will be able to move the gutter beyond it and then we can see right from this side is the affordable houses over there and you can see all those areas have been flooded these are also concerned citizens who are wondering what will happen in the future we really need the intervention of the district we can see people's farm at the beyond side of the stream over there and then that farm has now turned into a flooded area. This is Isaac Deba reporting from Ningo from, from District. Remember that just like Isaac, you can also send to us your visual reports via our WhatsApp number. It's 055-1433-044. It's live here on News 360. Remember, we're live on DSTV Channel 279 all across the world on TV3 Ghana on Facebook. Stay with us. We're getting into the world of business. Welcome back. Let's get into the world of business now. And 50 directors and shareholders are to face a trial over alleged roles they played in the collapse of the seven banks. This follows the referral of their dockets to the Attorney General's office after the conclusion of the work of a special investigative team. A special investigative team is awaiting the appropriate charges to be preferred against the directors based on the outcome of their investigations. There are reports that for one of the failed banks, more than 3.8 billion Ghana cities did not pass through the loan books. This was only identified after a special audit because the monies were reportedly distributed among the bank's directors. The receivers of the banks are also pursuing 31,000 customers of the failed banks to recover more than 10 billion Ghana cities in loans and advances. The receivers of the collapsed consolidated banks have been able to recover only 731 million Ghana cities in loan repayments. Banking consultant Dr. Richmond Echiahene wants the process to be swift. We see it as the ineptitude or we are not prepared to do the right thing. It's taking such an unreasonable time for people who I'm told have been found culpable are still loitering around. Some of them are even speaking boldly to even challenge the actions of the central bank. Whoever is handling this issue must act with speed and alacrity so that we can see the end of this case. Because it's becoming San Anabatros on some of us who have decided to speak on it. And it is not just good sitting on the fence. I am a Ghanaian, born and bred Ghanaian. And as such, we must speak on the issues that deserve to be spoken about. The crisis saw the deposits of some 1.5 million Ghanaians affected, though the government stepped in to safeguard their monies. Protecting the depositors has so far cost the state 9.9 .9 billion Ghana cities, according to the finance minister. Well, let's stay further on this particular issue. A bit. The Industrial and Commercial Workers Union has backed this suit against the 50 directors and shareholders who allegedly contributed to the collapse of the seven banks. The General Secretary Solomon Kote spoke to our uh, Labour correspondent, Daniel Opoku. According to the ICU, the decision to prosecute those who allegedly contributed to the collapse of the seven banks is overdue. The government have done so well to make sure that even workers who were in these banks were not just flipped off just like that. At least some effort is being made to see them through. So the next step for the regulator is to make sure that those who um, either personally or by their own actions or inactions brought this bank to this level must be made to respond. At this stage, nobody can say they have actually caused the collapse of the bank, but they are responsible. They must come and answer to their charges. Currently, a docket of about 31,000 customers from the seven banks are to be forwarded to the Attorney General's office. These customers, according to a special investigative team by the Bank of Ghana, have defaulted in a repayment of loans. The central bank governor, Ennis Addison, has proposed the setting up of a special court to deal with the sector. But the ICU's general secretary, in addition to their prosecution, expects the funds to be recovered. 
BOG will be very responsible to make sure that those who might be caught in this situation, some flexibility could be given to them to be able to make good the money. After all, it is not the punishment that is necessary at this time. It is the recovery of the money. The recoveries are slow because businesses uh, are also quite slow now in our time. You know, businesses are not moving as it ought to. So those who also went for the money for some other business or transaction and uh, the true no fault of theirs, okay, their dispersion couldn't work well. Some rearrangements should be made to enable them to pay the money's back. He entreated the Bank of Ghana to tighten its monitoring role. Good work that has begun. We shouldn't renege. The BOG as a regulator should be encouraged to go full scale to make sure they encourage those who are doing the right thing to continue to serve the need of this economy. And then that will also put you know, fears into those who are trying to you know, mess the economy up. In fact, the finance is the bloodline of every economy. And therefore, if the regulation is right and the proper controls are put in place, then Ghana will be a Ghana once again. Now, Ghana Oil Company Limited has been rebranded to Goyal Company Limited. Now, the move announced at its 50th annual general meeting of shareholders is intended to promote the brand by maintaining its household name. Goyal was incorporated as a private limited liability company on June 14, 1960, with the objective of marketing petroleum and its related products. The change in the name would empower the board to alter its regulations to reflect its new status. It is also to help deepen the branding and presence of Goyal in the oil marketing industry. He said, you see that has been on the drawing board for more than a decade. I you know the brand is growing and then uh, locally, internationally, everybody you know, calls Ghana Oil Company Limited Goyal, Goyal for short. And we think that, well, just to promote the brand and push the brand. Over the last five years, the company's profit after tax has grown by 20% per year on average. In the year under review, Goyal made a consolidated profit after tax of 81.9 million CDs through a number of service stations acquired close to the end of the year. Chairman of the Board of Directors Kwamina Battles said the company is ready to support the gas recirculation model. The company is on an expansion path in line with the company's strategy the company, the construction of a bitumen plant, three LPG gas recirculation plants in Tema, Kumasi and Tamale, streaming of more service stations and intensification of activities in the offshore business are all in progress. Goyal initiated the Zero Harm to their staff, customers and communities campaign which is geared towards reducing occupational hazards and full realization of occupational goals. The company was also adjudged by the Chartered Institute of Marketing Ghana as petroleum company for the third consecutive year. It currently ranks second on the Ghana Investments Promotion Council's Club 100. Oh, that's it for business tonight here on News 36. Remember, you can also... Uh, join us with your thoughts tonight also as we go on as shareholders of the at the 50th annual general meeting at Goyal have approved the agreement between the company and ExxonMobil of the United States for deep water oil exploration at the Cape Three Points. Now the agreement is intended to boost local content participation in the sector. The joint operating agreement, which followed months of rigorous due diligence, was signed in November 2018. It was sealed after a no-objection approval from government through the Energy Ministry. Goyal will take up the 5% stake in Exxon Mobil's upcoming exploration venture in the deep water Cape Three Points. For the first five years, Goyal will not spend more than $25 million. But assuming there is an oil find, if Exxon Mobil will go for what debt to finance it, Goyal can also go for debt to finance it. After all, it's a risk. If you are going upstream, it's a risk that you take. You cannot run a company without taking a risk. So no venture, no gain. If others are doing it, others are competing to do it. And we, being the largest indigenous oil company, with 15,000 Ghanaian shareholders, 
if this opportunity comes and we don't take advantage of it, then what else are we going to do? However, ExxonMobil has withdrawn from the bidding process for oil blocks in Ghana. Well, this is our website, 3news.com, for some more business news. Natalie? Thanks for the business news, Alfred. On to some other top stories this evening. Management of the Tema region of power distribution services say it is taking steps to secure an injunction to restrain residents of the Lua Mania district from attacking workers of the company embarking on a mass disconnection exercise and collecting unpaid electricity bills. At a news conference, the regional director engineer, Joseph Forsin, expressed the company's resolve to collect 84 million CDs owed by the consumers in the district from 2014 to 2018. Engineer Joseph Forsen insisted calls by some defaulting customers to cancel their accumulated bills were untenable. PDS, through the Ghana Police Service, has secured an interlocutory injunction from the law courts restraining all representations of the Crowbot District customers and all stakeholders, for that matter, from attacking and preventing the former from performing their lawful duties. He explained that the recalcitrant behavior of some residents there was worrying, but that will not make the company to back down on its agenda. From 2017 up to date, we give each district a target to collect so that at least we try and then reduce our debt. And I can say that it has not, the revenues or the receivables that we always have from Krobo week after week has not been very encouraging. In fact, sometimes you go as low as 20% of that target. The target is about 1.6 million. He cited examples of attacks which PDS workers at the Manya Krobo and the Tema region have suffered over the period. And you are not supposed to pay your bill. You are not supposed to be disconnected. That's the message when you see that red man. So if I'm a worker, and I go and I see a red band. It means that I'm doing that against my own life. I mean, how, 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 how low can we sink? So if you want a clean bill to pay, then you should give us the opportunity to come to your house to read your meter so that we can give you the actual bill. But if you are disallowing me, then definitely you cannot actually get any bill. The bill that you may get will be an estimated bill, which obviously you say an estimated bill is an overbilling, so you will not you know, pay. There was a time that, in fact, it would not even be safe in those days, the early part of the 2017s. It would not be even safe to just go and deliver a common bill to a customer. If you say that maybe a particular year, 2017, you did not receive a bill, then it is because of this uh, antecedent uh, and these issues. Irate residents in some communities in the Manya Krobo municipality clash with staff of PDS and police personnel in a mass disconnection exercise over non payment of bills in which one person is reported to have been shot dead and several others injured. The lower Manya municipality falls under the Tema region. For more that issue subsequently, but stay with us here on News 360. We've got sports news coming up shortly. So it's now time for some entertainment and lifestyle news with me, Nana Quedrad. Of course, today, the industry, in fact, the music industry was struck with some sort of silence and excitement and all of that. But all the same, let's look at it. VGMA, a member of the VGMA board, Ni Aite Habond, has justified the sanctions handed Stoneboy and Shatawale, stressing the verdict only reflects the severity of the actions. I think the, the verdict is a reflection of the action, you get me? So um, if you say it's too harsh, it then means that the action was too harsh. The action that they did which led to the verdict was too harsh. Celebrated media personality and member of the VGMA board, Kofi Otredako, thinks the sanctions are necessary to safeguard the sanctity of the VGMA brand and restore sanity in the music industry. As a board, we thought we need to send our signal so that if something like that should happen in future, people would know 
the, the consequences. You know, hence our decision to, to indefinitely ban them. I don't think it's a hard decision. Imagine if things had gone bad, if the fans had, um, had clashed, if there had been a bloodbath in the auditorium. We didn't have to wait for that, you know, so we thought it wise to really um, have a very tough sanction against um, the two gentlemen. All right, so still on the same story, the entertainment world has been talking about after the VGMA board's decision to indefinitely ban Shatter Wally and Stoneboy. Here are the views of some entertainment analysts on the indefinite ban. VGMA announced that the gentlemen at the center of the confusion, Shatawali and Stoneboy, have been banned indefinitely and they are also supposed to return all the plaques they won on the night. Both musicians are hereby banned indefinitely from participating in the nominations, selections and performances at the Vodafone Ghana Music Awards scheme. Also, the two artists are hereby stripped of all awards they won at the 20th VGMA. We've been engaging some showbiz pundits who want to find out what they make of this very verdict. Is it too harsh? Is it a fair verdict? I think they took this decision to also make sure that people don't repeat the same thing in the future. My point of view from where I am coming from, I think it would have been best if perhaps they would have stripped them of this year's awards, but ban them indefinitely is too harsh. To me, if you ask me, the, the monetization of the awards has been one of the major problems. It brings a lot of tension. People come back for votes. Somebody is spending as much as about 50,000 Ghana cities just to win an award. and. You should expect that somebody like this comes to the award ceremony with a lot of high hopes. So to me, um, we should also look at certain things that will raise attentions on the night of the award scheme, more than just banning indefinitely. I support both Shatawali and Stoboy being banned. I believe the 20th edition should have been the celebration. We should have fun and not to fight. I believe it's a shame to our industry. So uh, moving forward, I think all the artists will take note of this and something like that wouldn't happen again. Stoneboy. I know by now we'll regret for his actions. The Shatawali same was a regret for what, whatever he did. For me, I think um, if, if you don't put the right laws down, we all flout uh, the game. So I think it's, it's right for the VGMA board to have just ask them to ship them off their award. And Any lessons to be learned from this? Yeah, for me, I think going forward, artist management should, should know how to handle their artists. And for me, I think. Um, on the night, both managers lost it. They lost it for, for the artists. Some, however, are of the view that the indefinite ban handed the two influential musicians will take some excitement from the awards. So if they are banned now, I'm thinking of next year, uh, how it will go. So By extension, the ban means winner of the 2018 VGMA, Ebony Reigns, still rules as the artist of the year. One day you will know. These are the words of my mother. So those were the analysts or entertainment analysts in the industry sharing their opinion on the indefinite ban of Shatawali and Stoneboy. We look forward to see what's going to unfold as we move on in this industry. And that's about it for Entertainment and Lifestyle News with me, Nana Kwejuado. There's more on 3news.com. Of course, I'm black and proud. As always, on behalf of the rest of the team, we say thank you for spending your 60 minutes with us. My name is Alfred Okanse, and I am black and proud. And I'm Natalie Fort. Lots more news on our website, freenews.com. Thanks so much for watching. I'm black and proud.